Hello, Algebra with Financial Applications. Welcome back. We're going to jump into 1.2, which is on travel. The topic is travel expenses, but the math it covers has to do with cumulative frequency, relative frequency, and so forth. So I'm going to go over those terms with you and then do a couple examples. Again, you can pause, fast forward, um, if, whatever helps you. So we're going to start with one of the terms in this section called cum cumulative frequency. And this is basically a running total of all frequencies less than or equal to that particular interval. Now that's um, kind of the fancy definition, but I think you should pay attention to the word running total because we are going to be basically um, adding things as we go in a table. So I'm going to give you an example. For example, let's say I had the price of certain items in my store. Frequency would be like how many people purchase that item. And then this new term that we're introducing, cumulative frequency. Okay, and you can use shorthand if you like um, for that column. So let's say I had um, the price of the following items. I had a $6 item, $8, let's say I'm dealing with plants, a $12 plant, a $16 plant. Frequency again would be like the number of people that purchase that item. So let's say 10 people purchased a $6 plant, 12 people purchased $8, seven, six. Okay, so frequency is the amount of that item that occurred. Cumulative frequency gives you a running total. So for this column, I'm always going to start with my first piece of data, which is 10. And then moving down, I'm going to add. So in this next line, I'm adding the previous one with the current one, which is 12. So 10 plus 12, I now have a total of 22 items purchased. So think of it as a running total for items purchased. In this, I'm just going to make a little note. First frequency, okay? Ends up with that arrow. This next one was the first plus the second. Then moving down, I'm now going to take the last number of 22 and add the current row that I'm on, which is 7. So this is now 29. This last row should be the previous item plus the current item, which would be 35. Now this last number should match your total frequencies. So if I was to add up everything in this column, I would get 35. Notice these match. Okay, so cumulative frequency, you're simply adding your frequencies as you work your way down. So let's move on to um, the next one in your book, which is relative frequency. And relative frequency is the ratio of the frequency of an item or frequency of, a, of an interval to the total. And so for this one, you're going to have decimals um, because you're looking at a ratio of an item to the total. So I'm going to use the same data. Okay, um, I'm going to highlight this word because this is a new word. And so I'm going to pull down the same data. I have the price. And it's the same as above, so a $6 item, an $8 item, a $12 item, a $16. I think I remember I called those plants. Frequency is the number of people who purchased it, or how many times $6 occurred. So 10, 12, 7, 6. Remember, if I add all of these up, like in context, if these were plants, 35 plants were purchased. So this new one, relative frequency, is a ratio. It's totally different from the last one, but it is a ratio of the current interval 
to the total. So for example, this first one, I would be taking 10 and dividing it by the total of 35. So using my calculator, um, and hopefully you guys have one by now, uh, 10 divided by 35, 0.285. So I'm gonna round. Um, I'm gonna round to the nearest thousandth, and I'll put that above. That's the word thousand with the th at the end. And thousandth is three decimal places. Um, at three places after the decimal. Now I always look to the number to the right. So the seven is gonna round that five up. So I have 0 0.286. If you're confused on how to round, Google. Google it. Okay, next one, I'm going to take the current column I'm in, which is 12, and divide it by the total. So 12 divided by 35, I end up with 0 0.382. The, if I'm wanting to round it to the thousandth, I have to look at the number after it. So 8 rounds the 2 up, so 0 0.343. Next one, again, I'm taking the current row that I'm in, 7 divided by the total. So 7 divided by 35 should be a nice, nice number because 7 goes into 35 perfectly five times. And you should get 0 0.2. And last one, 6 divided by 35, right? 6 divided by the total. Hopefully you can see this. Now I'm going to round this to the nearest thousandth, but notice if I'm wanting to cut it off here, because it's tenths, hundredths, thousandths, I look at the number on the right, which is a 4. 4 is not 5 or greater, so I'm going to keep that at 0 0.171. Now if I add these, I should get 1. So just to clarify, if you add your ratios, 0 0.286 plus 0.343 plus 0.2 plus 0 0.171, I should get simply one because they're all part of a whole. Anyways, that is how you do relative frequency. The last one in this section is a term, um, it's kind of a review of the last two. And that is, this is relative cumulative, so there's that word cumulative again, frequency. And it is simply a running total of the relative frequency. Okay? So how you would do this one, and then we'll do some real, not real, but some examples where we're evaluating the data based on these new terms. So I'm sticking with the same data. I still have the price frequency. Um, now for this one, I'm going to need the relative cumulative frequency has to do with my relative frequency. So I'm going to bring that one down. And I'm just going to use shorthand. And then this current one we're going over is relative cumulative frequency. Probably going to run out of, oh, no, I didn't. But you can use shorthand in your homework because that is, that is a lot. So um, price of my plants, I've got a $6, $8, $12, $16 plant. Ten of these were purchased, 12 of these, seven of these, six of these. Now I'm bringing down the table I just completed in the last example. I'm going to bring that down. So 0 0.286. 0 0.0, what's 0.343, 0 0.2, and 0 0.171. So this term is, is pretty simple. I'm Anytime I see that cumulative, I know I'm just adding, I'm doing a running total. I'm simply adding things. So for this first one, I'm going to start with the first piece of data, which is my, right here, 0 0.286. Okay, so start with first. This next one should be the previous item plus the current item. So I'm adding the previous to the current. 
going to be this row here. So 0 0.286 plus 0.343, and I end up with 0 0.629. Now I'm going to take, in this next row, I'm going to take the previous amount, 0 0.629, and add the current amount. So 0 0.629 plus 0 0.2, and I get 0 0.829. And by the way, you don't need the zero before the decimal. It just tells you the ones place is valued at zero. And in this last one, I'm going to, again, I'm going to keep repeating myself. So take the previous item plus the current item, and that should give me 1.0. Okay. So that is on your frequency terms. I'm going to do um, an example with you. So I've already kind of glued it in here, um, but it should look a lot like your homework. This is going over the prices of um, a train and the prices of their seats. Okay, so I've got the prices of my seats, how many people purchased that price, and then I'm going to add a cumulative frequency column. So, um, and that is what Part A asked me to do. So in Part A, I'm going to begin my cumulative frequency column. So remember, we start with the first value, and we're going to work our way down. So this next one should be the previous plus the current, which would be 29. This next one, previous plus the current, that should be 43. Next, 43 plus 7. Next, 50 plus 5. Next, 50 plus, 55 plus 4 is 59. Now, uh, that should match. If I add this column, if I add all of the frequencies up, I should get 59. So, again, remember those, the bottom here and here should match. So now I'm going to use this data to complete some of these questions. So it says, how many passengers paid a fare at or below 45? Right, so we're doing how many are at, so equal to, below would be less than 45. So here's my 45 price. There are 17 people that purchased it at 45. There are 12 that purchased it for 39, which is less than 45. I could add those two up, or I could utilize this number here. 29 passengers, and I don't want that 9 to look like a 7, so I'm going to rewrite it. 29 passengers purchased a ticket at 45 or less. Next one, how many passengers paid a fare above 70? So here is 70. Now it says at or above. So equal, so this would be how many are greater than or equal to 70. So here's 70. So it went from 50 to 59. Now this is kind of hard because you're looking at um, how many purchased at, at or above. Okay, so I'm looking at these three numbers or I could just look at these three. It's really up to you. I know that sev seven people purchased um, a $70 ticket, five people purchased 88, and four so I would really be adding these three. So this total is a little bit harder to use these numbers. So I know that seven paid $70, five paid 88, four paid 107. So that would be nine plus seven. So 16 people, okay? Now, if you wanted to use the numbers on the right, it would be 59 minus 43. So that would be 16 people above or below. Okay. Next one, how many people paid a fare that was at least 45 and at most 88? So I'm looking at what is occurring in between here, between 29 and 55. Um, but I'm having to account for the, the 12. So I can do this two ways, okay? You can literally look at, okay, at least 45, 17 people purchased 45, 14, 7, Five. If I added those up, that would be people that purchased from 45 to 88, which could give me a total of 43. Or I can look at, okay, there were uh, here, my cumulative, there were 55 at 88. 
I have to subtract all the way back to 12 because I have to account for 20, uh, 17 people. I, it's kind of hard to do it the other way, um, so that's why I'm showing you both, and that also gives you 43. Um, you can use your cumulative frequency or you can use just the percentage. Okay? Now, in number two, they'd like us to add a relative frequency column. Okay? Remember, that's when I'm looking at frequency to the total. So I'm going to record my frequency. I had 12, 17, 14, 7, 5, and 4 with a total of 59. Here I'm doing, they want me to calculate a relative frequency column. Remember, I'm taking the current number and I'm dividing that by my total. Just extra practice. So I end up for this one, I get and I'm going to round it to the nearest thousands. I got 0 0.203. For this next one, 17 divided by the total, I got 0 0.288. For this next one, I got 0 0.2. Whoops. <laughs> For this next one, I got 0 0.237. I divided 14 by 59. And you know what? Let me put these a little bit closer because I have the numbers on the left really, really, really small. And then working my way down, I got 0 0.119, 0 0.085, 0 0.068. Remember, we're simply taking the number and dividing it by the total. All right, so which ticket prices have a relative frequency greater than 0 0.2 but less than 0 0.3? Okay, so greater than um, 0 0.2 would be anything that begins with 0.3. So that would be these three, right? I'm looking at the frequency of 0 0.203, so that ticket price um, was for the $39. So I'm looking at the ticket prices of 0 0.203, 0 0.288, and 0.237. Now I put the frequency here. If I was to add the price column here, this was for the $39 ticket, the $45 ticket, and the $55 ticket. So those three prices are my answer. So $39, $45, and $55. Um, hopefully, this is enough. Um, I can do one more with you or we can move on um, because I think you know, that kind of explains those columns pretty well. Um, but the next part of this section is percentile rank. So that's the next thing covered. Now, percentile rank um, is going to be covered a little bit further um, in the further section on z-score. But percentile rank is the percentage of numbers that fall at or below a given number in the list. So when is percentile rank used? Okay, well, have you ever heard of valedictorian? Valedictorian looks at the rank of students from, you know, highest GPA to lowest. And it, so when you are given valedictorian, you should be number one in your class or above 99% of the rest of your class. So that is where percentile rank is used. Um, it's used in sports. It's used in, like, when you're born, your birth weight. Um, what percentage of babies weigh less than you. Um, when you get your SAT score, they tell you your percentile rank. Like, hey, you scored 50% better than all students. So this is used a lot when, when people evaluate data. So I'm going to do um, an example with you, um, and then we will, so we can discuss percentile rank. So, for example, let's say... Um, there are the following, I hope this isn't 
a quiz is out of 15. And here are my quiz scores. So uh, two people scored a one. There were three fours, right? That would be awful out of 15. Here is a score of 6.5. Three people scored a seven. And I'll space that a little bit more out. Two people scored 8.5. Two people scored an 11, and I'll move this down. Two people scored an 11, and one person scored a perfect score. So let's say those are quiz scores. If I ask you what is the percentile rank um, of the score of four. So if you scored a four, how many people did you score above you is basically what it's saying. So to calculate this, you should count um, how many numbers are at or below a four. And notice here, there are multiple fours. So I'm counting, I'm not just counting one and this one because those are the only two below. I have to also include the score of four. So there are one, two, three fours plus the two below. There are five that are at or below 4, and I'm going to divide that by my total, total number of scores. So if I count this up, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. There were 14 total scores. If I take my calculator, 5 divided by 14, I get 0 0.357. So that would be 36, if I rounded, percent. So if you scored a 4, you were higher than 36% of the class. Okay, B, what would be the percentile, why am I misspelling words? <laughs> percentile is literally the word percent and tile at the end. What is the percentile rank of someone who scored an 8.5? Remember, I'm counting everybody that scored an 8.5 or below. So I would start with the last 8.5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So 11 people scored at or below 8.5. And I'm dividing that by my total. There are 14 scores. So 11 divided by 14, I got 0.785. If I make that a percent, that is roughly 79%. So if you scored an 8.5, you scored above 79% of the class. Okay? So I'm going to do one more example of that. I don't know where all my little papers went. going to do an example of percentile in a real life problem and I'm just going to make this example I think this is what this is one this was two I'll make this number three all right so Tessa lives in her major city um, here are the taxi cab rates um, round trip for 23 days that she worked in August. And so we're going to find the percentile rank for the following scores. Okay. So here are, not scores, I'm sorry, here are all the, the amount that she paid for a taxi in 23 days. So I know that 23 days, right, should be my total. So I know my total is 23. So find the percentile rank of a fare of 25.50. So remember, I'm counting scores at or below 25.50. Okay, so I'm counting. I shouldn't say scores because it has to do with money. I'm counting uh, numbers that are at or below 25.50. So here's 25.50. So that's the last one. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. There were 14 
um, at or below divided by 23 equals, I got 0 0.608, so if I rounded that, that would be roughly 61%. So 61% um, of her taxi fares were um, 25 50 or, oops, 25. There's not a lot of room to write on these or less. Okay. Next one, find the percentile rank of 25.9. So I'm going to start with 25.9. And instead of counting all of them, I know there's 23 of them and there's only two of them that are greater than 25.9. So I know 21 of them. 25.9 and less. So 25, 21 divided by my total, and I get a 0.913. So I'm just going to round that to 91%. So 91% of taxi fares were at or less than $25.90. So, based on our answers to parts A and B of this problem, which fair do you think would have a percentile rank of about 70%? So, if I look at the last two, I know 2550 was 61, so it has to be greater than 2550, but, and it's going to be closer to 2550, right? 70% is closer to this price than it is to this price. So, I'm going to say, I'm going to guess 25.75 or 25.80. Um, this is a problem where we are estimating. So I'm going to guess 25, about 25.75. It should be in the middle. Okay. So um, that pretty much covers this section for homework. You're going to skip numbers 7, 8, and 12. I believe that's the same ones that I put in the computer, hopefully, in Canvas. So. Thank you, and I have to unlock this in order to press.